So it's now time to think about some of the chemistry outlined in the partner video to this one, which explained the science of Coca-Cola. Glucose is based on a six-membered ring, as you can see here. And we said we we're going to consider the shapes that six-membered rings can have. Shape is something that, in organic chemistry terms, we refer to as the conformation of the molecule. Many molecules are mobile. You can rotate bonds, and they'll have one shape or conformation which is preferred over others because it's energetically more stable. What you're looking at here is the model of a six-membered ring in what we call a boat conformation. You can see that the left and right sides of that conformation are raised up, and the carbon framework looks a little bit like a boat. We can draw the boat conformation as follows. First of all, we draw the carbon framework. You can see the two points are pointing upwards. And then we can show where the hydrogen atoms lie on that framework. We have those on the points of the boat. We then have hydrogen atoms pointing downwards underneath these carbons pointing backwards and out to the sides. The boat is not a very stable conformation of a six-membered ring. Why not? Well, this hydrogen and this hydrogen come quite close together, and the two tips want to repel one another. On top of that, this hydrogen and this hydrogen are eclipsed. They're both pointing downwards and partly trying to fill the same region of space as one another. And so there are bad interactions between the hydrogens within the boat conformation of cyclohexane. So there's a preferred conformation for a six-membered ring, and that's what we're looking at now in the model. We're looking at flipping from the boat conformation to a chair conformation. In the chair conformation, you can see as you look at here that the right-hand side is higher up than the left-hand end, and it looks a little bit like a reclining deck chair. The right-hand end, slightly higher up than the left-hand end, like so. Notice that this is parallel to this, this is parallel to this, and this is parallel to this. This is the way of drawing a six-membered ring. We then show the hydrogens. First of all, we show what we call the axial hydrogens pointing up and down on the structure. Notice that if the carbon is going up, the hydrogen points upwards. If the carbon is coming down, the hydrogen points downwards. We then show the equatorial hydrogens on that structure. And what I want you to notice is that this hydrogen is parallel to this bond, this hydrogen is parallel to this bond, this hydrogen is parallel to this bond. There's always a parallel set of bonds, so you can work out where the equatorial hydrogens are. And these equatorial hydrogens are the ones, when we look back at the model, that are around the rim of the ring, and the axial hydrogens are the ones pointing up and the ones pointing down. Glucose is quite a complicated example of a six-membered ring, but I want to show that we can work through its chemistry quite simply. So let's start off by drawing a six-membered ring. I'll go for one with the left hand up and the right hand end down, chair conformation, like a deck chair. Now, we have to put the oxygen into the ring, and it's next to the right hand end. So if this is the right hand end, here we have an oxygen atom in the ring. Now, we then go through putting the substituents onto the ring. It's easy if we show, first of all, each of the positions. So put on the axial groups and then the equatorial groups. Remember the parallel bond rule for drawing those. So we're now seeing where the possible substituents are on this glucose ring. Now, this wavy bond for this OH means actually the OH could be here or here. In glucose, both forms are okay. 
We then come around to the next position, the OH is pointing down on this ring. Well, this OH is clearly pointing upwards, this OH is pointing downwards, so this must be where the OH is. It's pointing not upwards towards us, but down. So here is the OH group. Come around to the next carbon, the OH is pointing up. Well, this group is pointing slightly up, this group is what we think of as pointing down, so the OH must be here. On the next carbon, the OH is pointing down. Well, this is the down position, this is the up position, so there must be obviously hydrogen on here, OH on here. So we can show the hydrogens on these positions as well. The final one is a CH2 OH, and it's pointing up. Well, this is the substituent pointing slightly up. This is the substituent pointing down. So the CH2 OH must be here, and the hydrogen must be here. And we'll just note this position as being either an H or an OH. And this is the structure of glucose. One of the things I want you to notice is that all of the OH groups are pointing in equatorial positions. Equatorial positions are more stable than axial positions because in the axial positions you get repulsions between here and here and here. All of these groups are pointing into a similar region of space, here and here and here, and if they're bulky they repel one another. So it's better to put your bulky groups in equatorial positions onto the ring. There's one other thing we need to consider with a C6 ring. We can flip the conformation. So instead of having, as you look at it, the left hand up and the right hand end down, we can flip it. So the left hand end goes down and the right hand end goes up. So we can move from one type of chair to another type of chair. This is also true of glucose. So we also need to consider that we could have the flipped ring like this with the oxygen there. The right hand end has come up, the left hand end has gone down. Let's see what effect this would have. Well, we have H or OH here, so that position we can ignore. The next position, our OH group is pointing down, so it's no longer equatorial, it's been flipped into an axial position. The next carbon, our OH group was pointing up, so it's also now flipped from an equatorial position to an axial position. The next carbon atom, our OH group was down, once again axial, and in the next carbon atom our OH was up, well the up is now the axial position. So if we flip the ring, what we do is we move all the OH groups from being equatorial to being axial. It's the same compound, but this conformation, this shape, will be much more stable than this one, because the bulky groups on the left hand example are in the equatorial positions. If they're in the equatorial positions, they're optimally spaced around the rim of the molecule and not all pointing into the same region of space. So sugar is one of the most important components in Coca-Cola and six-membered ring chemistry is hard. That's why I focused in this tutorial video on the chemistry of the six-membered ring. However, for a bit of light relief, let's just look at aspartame, one of the key molecules that replaces sugar in Diet Coke, and let's think about the functional groups in aspartame and looking at the structure, on the left hand end we have a carboxylic acid, we then have an amine, NH2, we then have a CONH group, which is an amide, we then have a COOCH3, that's an ester, and we have a benzene ring. And it acts like sugar to give you the sense of sweetness in your mouth. Although, to be honest, I really don't like the taste of aspartame at all.